What do you think would happen if Iran, if the Christians become more and revolt against Islam? Well, in Iran first, you know, the people are against Islam anyway, regardless if they are Christians or not. And the majority who they are against Islam is not the Christians, actually. I mean, the Christians, they are peaceful people. They just won't leave them alone. You know, they are not really interested in government. But generally speaking, most of Iranian, they are very angry from such a garbage regime, you know. Yeah, so the change, you know, uh, uh, it might happen, but you see this, this stupid American, and the Russian, both of them, they are supporting Iran. They are supporting Iran in many ways. They left all sanctions, uh, like from Al-Houthi, uh, uh, America, they knew, like now they have still some sanctions, but America, they knew that Erdogan, he buy all their oil, and he re-import. So he make a lot of money from the oil of Iran. So Iran, sanctions is useless. Iran sell their oil to Qatar. Qatar sell it to somebody else under their name. The same as they did with the sanctions to, to Russia, useless. Erdogan, he buy somebody from Africa, somebody from here, you know, and like undercover a different country. They buy it or they sell it to Emirat, businessmen in Emirat. They buy it and they resell it under their name. And supposedly now the, the oil is coming from Emirat. So, you know, those terrorist regime, they flourish when the, their enemy is stupid. This is why Iran will not collapse as long as they have money. In order to make people go revolt crazy way, you have number one reason is to struggle with food and like surviving living. Usually people don't go on revolt so crazy as long they are like, you know, okay, like fine, you know, as long there is some food on the table. But we hope that change will come faster and this regime will collapse. But for now, you know, this regime is going to be there for some time as long they have money and they are expanding their terrorism around the world. This is why the American European Union, they should fix their problems between Ukraine and Russia, and they come to agreement, all of them to fight terrorism. But I think as long as we have this Putin, that will not happen. But at least European Union and uh, the American, they should change their target, because now we know this, it's clear, how important it is the role of Iran in what happened in uh, Israel. Right now, there's many uh, ships, they have been attacked in the Red Sea. So they can disturb trade, they can disturb export, import to many countries around the world. And they are causing big problems to everybody. It's time for the whole world to stand against them and take them down. No, no, Iran, even in the in the human, uh, Iran, I think it's still now, I don't know if it is or not, it, it was the head of a human right. <laughs> they made Iran is the head, the chair of a human right watch in the United Nations. Can you believe it? This is why this United Nations is a joke, you know. If I am a president of USA, they need birth control. Yeah, you know, they, uh, you see, if they are smart, they would do birth control because simply when you have a very big population in small land and you don't have a job. Uh, but, you know, Hamas, they will, they, this, is, this is how terrorist organization, they take advantage. Newborn babies, there's no jobs, there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, that, that country is nothing. So you want to have a job? Here we go, we pay you salary. Hamas, they charge. Any product when I go inside Gaza, 20% to their pocket, that's to Hamas. Plus tax for the government of Hamas. So there's tax to Hamas and there's tax to the government. I showed you in the previous video, if you remember, the, the head of Hamas, Sinwar, he have a total of $4 billion worth. The three or four leaders of Hamas, they have a total of eleven billion dollars. Those they used to be street boys. They are they are nobody. They don't have education. This guy, uh, uh, he went to jail. He was like twenty years old, nineteen years old. He spent twenty years something in jail. 
So he will make no money. Where is the money coming from? His house is a small house, tiny in 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 uh, in the camp. How how you end with four billion dollars? Because they control everything. If a citizen wanna buy a phone, he have to pay twenty percent value of the phone to his pocket. Twenty percent. Anything you buy. You buy concrete, even though they receive the concrete for free. They, they get the concrete for free from Qatar, they say it for citizen. They get meat can from the United Nations for free. They put it in the market for sale. And actually, I saw that in many countries. Like, how many of you donate clothing? You do, right? Do you know that the American they donate clothing to poor countries? And then in those poor countries, the government, they don't give them for free. Do you know that? They do auction. Businessmen, they come and buy them, and then they sell them in stores. I'm not joking. So you donate, and you think now, okay, you have a shoes that still look nice, but they are small, whatever reason you want, you know, you want to get rid of them. So you donate the, the clothing, they put them in containers, and they send them to the Middle East, or to Africa, <clears throat> or East Europe. But you give them for free, and supposedly they will be given to the poor. What the government do? Because the government is the one who receives whatever you send simply you just sell it and the poor man who's supposed to receive the donation he got nothing he can't even afford to buy them and they, and they sell them for a good price because in those countries they don't have any good quality clothing they have very cheap quality and usually you know like stuff coming from the west or usa it's a very good quality. Like if you go to China, by the way, you will find that a Chinese product sold in China is not the same quality as a Chinese product sold in America. In America, Chinese product they are very good. Shoes, jackets, pants, jeans, phones. So when you donate, the poor ones are the last one to get the donation. They don't. You know, you wish. You think you are really going to send them to the poor. And you know, like those uh, those people who live in the West, those children, those Antifa, who grow in a, a spoiled community. They have phones since they are babies. They have milk every day in the morning, you know, in their, in their dish. Uh, they have, uh, they complain about the sandwich they are eating is not really friendly. They are bored from McDonald's. They don't like their life. This is how people live. This is a true life. Now you want to force them to eat. You bring him McDonald's. Oh, you know, he, he kicked the floor with his feet. He is upset. Uh, the girl, she want a puppy. The guy, he want a TV in his room. Uh, I want to buy the, the teenage. He want Atari game. He want a PlayStation. You know, here, look at this. Those are the one. What do you know about struggling? They are just little tiny kids. They have to go to work in order to eat. Collecting garbage. Recycle. What people know about struggling. This is why it's very important if you have children to show them this so they can learn and appreciate what they have. A person don't appreciate he will be a very bad person when he grow. It doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how much he have worth, he will never be happy. By the way, when I was a kid, I used to go and work with my dad. In their age. But not because we, you know, like my family in need, but I love to work. I don't I don't like I, you know, like I, I do anything, any trick just to make him take me. I like to work. These days kids don't work, what they do, they don't, you know. I, I I spend the whole day with my dad in their age, maybe even younger. 
Not a single summer I stayed as a kid playing in the street. Every summer I work. I work the whole summer, the whole vacation for school. I go to work. So life, my friend, is tough. And people, they struggle. You might be lucky you grow up in a family where they provide you food and shelter and school. They spoil you. They take your vacation. You know, there's people there. Do you think those guys, those kids will, will have ever something called vacation? They are, they are grown men already. They are not kids. That's why people who come from poor countries, they grow way faster than the one who grow up in a wealthy country because they struggle with their life and they have to learn all the skills of surviving. So if you bring this guy at the end, let us say he become 15 years old, he have the skills of surviving of somebody is 40. We love our kids, they abuse there. Well, this is not about abuse there. If, you're, if, if the parents are very poor, what they will do? No, no, don't think this way. See, those, we, those are not Muslim. We do not know where they are from, maybe Indian. Uh, this is not about they are abusing. But you are lucky you are born in a family where they have wealth and maybe their parents is educated. You have a nice roof in the top of you. You have a nice bed. You have a warm. Those are, you know, they are born in a very poor family. This, it's not the parents abusing them. There's no, there's no food. There's no money. The whole country is, is messed up. And when the parents are not educated, eh, the women, she want to get married. The husband, the man want to get married. They have sex. They have babies. And then what they can do? He is like eight years old. Go work. The father cannot feed him. Right? So don't be proud of you like we treat our kids nice. If you are born in such a society, you will be the same. What you can, can you change your parents? When the people are not educated, they don't, you know, they don't think, they don't plan for their life. They are very simple. Do you want to get married? Yes, have, you know. And actually in poor countries, they have more babies because this is their insurance. Because the, because the government have no place, there's no retirement, so what people do? They have kids. This is their insurance. It's not because they love children. And then this kid, he will have more kids too. So because when he gets old, his children support him. So having a big family is a form, is an ancient form of insurance. When you get older, your child, he will take care of you. Take care of his mom. So they have seven, eight. You know, they grow. They became men. If everyone give them like ten dollars, eh, they can survive. There's no retirement. There's no government. There's nothing. Yeah. So you know, life sometimes is not fair, or most of the time actually is not fair. You know, there is uh, people don't deserve actually wealth, and there is people who deserve wealth but they never have it. Yeah. There is a lot of crazy stuff in the world. Very sad. Some of us, we are lucky. We know we li we don't live in. Uh, we are not born in uh, such a, uh, you know, like uh, you know, tragedy or uh, mad situation. But some they are, and they do not choose. What they can do. You don't choose most of your life. You don't choose, you know. Some countries, there's no opportunity for anything. That's why if you, whatever you have, you learn how to appreciate what you have. <clears throat> you know, I talk about, like, I have an old car. Look at this poor guy. Look at his car. 
And I assure you, he is more lucky than others. I mean, he have something. He owns something. If you go to India, you will find millions of people. They just their life is based on bicycle. They carry stuff in the top of their bag. They walk with it for kilometers to sit it around. Yeah, but people, you know, people, people don't notice. Imagine you go to New York and there's a woman, she is carrying this in her head. And look, she is happy, actually. <laughs> you know, that is a sweet picture. They, they carry iPhone and they complain it's heavy. Right? Yeah. Life is full of stories. And there is people they appreciate what they have and there is people don't. And a human being is always agreed. It doesn't matter how much lucky he is, how much he have. Like, look, this is uh, maybe in New York, I don't know. And, you know, there's a homeless. Why, why anyone would be homeless in New York? Isn't it this is America where people they can make money and it's uh, well, drugs, they don't want to work, or migrant who have nobody to support them. They come to America because dreaming that America will be uh, like heaven. They told them that in America it's, life is so easy. And then they end in the street, you know. You mean the Prime Minister of India, he spent thousands on his lunch? Yeah, in India there is people who have, they are billionaires, they have hundreds of billions of dollars. And there is people, they sleep in the street. Yeah, in India there is no fairness in society at all, you know. This is why having children have to be careful, you know. You don't just make babies, throw them in the street. But how you can explain to, you know, such a thing to someone is uh, not educated. They will not listen. And you know, actually, I I always feel for poor people, and I met many poor people, and I found them way more nicer. For sure, generally speaking, you know, there's some, they are poor, but they are, uh, you know, they are very, like, very bad uh, quality. Uh, not because they are poor, but, like, they have a mentality of criminals, they want to rob you, they want to steal you. But I met a lot of poor people, they are way, way nice people. And they are more giving, you know, like you go to their house, they will be so excited to have you, like they, they, they find you like as if you are something, someone like very high coming to visit them and they think of themselves, they're low. Uh, so there is some, they are really beautiful, they have a nice smile, they are not, uh, not fake. 